Hello dear friend, thank you so much for watching and connecting with Victory Church one more time. I am Gian, the founding pastor of Victory Church from Odessa, Texas. I say hello to you. I invite you to go to our website, bchurch.us. Right there you will be able to connect with the podcast. You can also watch more of these studies in the Vimeo channel, the YouTube channel, and of course you can go to the Facebook page of Victory Church Odessa. This evening we are going to reflect on God's Word. This is the Bible study, the series, the letter of the Apostle Paul to the Romans. And today we arrive to chapter 12. We are going to study verses 1 and 2. And we are about to read now from the easy to read version in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please, Lord, guide us through this study. So I beg you, brothers and sisters, because of the great mercy God has shown us, offer your lives as a living sacrifice to Him, an offering that is only for God and pleasing to Him, considering what He has done. It is only right that you should worship Him in this way. Don't change yourselves to be like the people of this world, but let God change you inside with a new way of thinking. Then you will be able to understand and accept what God wants for you. You will be able to know what is good and pleasing to Him and what is perfect. It is interesting when you read something with the sentence, I beg you. Don't you think? Think about the moments when you are having conversations with people, someone that you love, someone, someone that probably works with you, anyone that you are hoping that this person will understand. <laughs> and actually, you are just praying, oh God, please let him understand, let her comprehend. And then you say, listen, I beg you. <laughs> well, that is how Paul begins this passage. I beg you, he says. And what is what he says in, re in reference to what? He says, because of the great mercy God has shown us, offer your lives as a living sacrifice to him. Your lives as a living sacrifice to him. You know, the whole concept of uh, Romans that we have studied 11 chapters, it is basically the gift of salvation that you can receive today by faith. If you are not a believer, you can become a believer just by opening your heart and receiving the salvation, the forgiveness of your sins, simply by believing that Jesus paid that price for you. Simple as that. There are no other requirements. Faith and belief that He paid the price gives you the benefit of becoming a child of God. It's a free gift for you. It's not that it's free. Somebody paid for that gift, but for you it's free. The Lord Jesus paid, paid the price for that. The whole chapters from 1 through 11 are just expositions of Paul about the importance of believing and how faith and grace are the key, not rules. Nothing. Because we cannot buy our forgiveness. We cannot give money or behave in a certain way to earn the right to be forgiven, to be right with God. He argued all that for 11 chapters. Now, in the last chapter 11, he was more insisting about Jews and no Jews. Called them Gentiles in the Bible because of the regulations and traditions and all that. But at the very end of chapter 11 in the previous episode, we reflected about the importance of finally accepting God's will in your life. And I encourage you, if you haven't heard that message, go back to the previous episode. Because it's important that you get it, how accepting God's will will transform everything in your life. So now here, at the beginning of chapter 12, he begins with this, I beg you, please 
offer your lives as a living sacrifice to him. And, and why is it that Paul is begging you in the name of God that you will live a life like that? What could be the benefit of that? The benefit of that simply is that you will not get into trouble. It's not that Paul or the church or anybody else is going to make profit out of your good lifestyle. Simply, you are not going to get into any trouble by living a life that honors God. Paul actually says this. He says, this is an offering that is only for God and pleasing to Him. You know, what, what you do with your life when you sanctify yourself and you say, I'm not going to do those things anymore. I'm not going to participate in things that are so into the flesh, so worldly. They are not holy things. I'm not going to live that kind of lifestyle. I'm going to live for God now. Well, that becomes an offering for the Lord. So people say, I really don't have any money to give the Lord. I don't have money to give an offering, which is relative because everyone has some sort of income. But let's suppose that somebody is that poor, doesn't have any money to give an offering to the Lord. Well, here is your answer. Live a, a life to please the Lord in such a way that your life will be your offering to Him and you will please Him. Because above all the things that the Lord wants is that you change your lifestyle. That you stop doing what is wrong. You already know what is wrong. You already know some things are so unholy. You cannot continue doing that. You already know there are some things that you cannot put inside of your system, whatever the things are. You already know that going to certain places is not the right thing to do. You already know that. You already know that practicing certain things with certain individuals is not holy. You already know that. So you basically you already know what is wrong, what is unholy. Therefore, therefore, living a pleasing life. Do you know how Paul calls it? He says, a living sacrifice. It's because you are not pleasing your own self, your flesh. It's the opposite. You are pleasing God. And that will bring you great results. If we continue reading, it says that that is the way that we worship Him. Sometimes people say, well, here is my offering, my money. Here is my singing, my song. I'm good with God. I'm going into my week to do whatever I want. Well, whomever is thinking that way is mistaken. Is mistaken because here clearly Paul explains that is your lifestyle. What actually is an offering and is the way that you worship him. Your lifestyle, a living sacrifice. When you say to the things of this world, no. You are forgiving. You appreciate what the Lord Jesus did. Therefore, you say, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to be part of that. I'm going to live a holy life. And that constitutes your offering and worship to God. Isn't it beautiful? That's wonderful. That's wonderful. And then he says, don't change yourselves to be like the people of this world. No, no you're not going to be like them. Let God change you inside with a new, new way of thinking. It's a new way of thinking. And you just let God to, to inspire you, to lead you. Then you will start to see things differently and process things differently. And you will be surprised when, when you start to think godly, what kind of great things you will start, be, start to be thinking. And great things that have, has to do with prosperity. It has to do 
with blessings and wonderful things that he can give you, <laughs> he says, then you will, be, you will be able to understand and accept what God wants for you. Because you, when you renew your mind and you let the Lord change your mind with his way of thinking, you will understand his will for you. And you will accept, accept that will and Paul ends saying, you will be able to know what is good and pleasing to him and what is perfect. You will know it. You will not have questions. You will be so certain about what is right and what is wrong, what is what pleases God, and you will say, this is what the Lord wants me to do. He wants me to stop doing this. He doesn't want me to keep doing that. He doesn't want me to go those places. He doesn't want me to to participate in those things. No, he wants me to live a holy life. And that, my friend, is wisdom. The power of God in your life that can change you and make you a very different person. If you are in Odessa, come to Victory Church. I would love to connect you with great people because you need a good, good, good group of people around you to inspire you and encourage you to do what is right. No one of us is perfect. I'm not perfect. No one in my church is perfect. There is no one human being that is perfect. That I can tell you this, we do our best to please the Lord, not in front of a camera or in the presence of the public. We do our best that in, in the private place in, of our homes, in our hearts, in our minds, we please the Lord. We do our best. And when we fail, what, do, what is what we do? We come to Him and we ask for forgiveness. That is the balance. We accept our limitations, our imperfections. We accept His forgiveness. And we refocus again in living a sacrificial life to please Him in a holy way. Thank you for being here. I hope to see you next time. Hey, 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 hey. That's all. That's all. That's all, folks. <laughs> Time to go home. <laughs> Ciao.